Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here and I just wanted to make a quick video to basically tackle this Brolan news. I know a little bit behind on this one. I think this is a very interesting piece of news for a few reasons. Now, obviously as you can see here, um, Nip have apparently offered around 600k for Brolan, which is a significant sum of money that is kind of starting to approach the supposed figure that device was purchased for. Now, the first thing I think this says is it says a lot about Fnatic's ambitions, depending on whether they accept the offer or not. Now, I think if they do sell Brolan, on the one hand, if they reinvest it in the playing squad, if they go out and they make smart purchases or acquisitions or whatever, using some of the money then maybe you can make arguments about how sensible it is or isn't um i think in traditional sports um you know i come from a football background being a, a uk guy so you know there's the concept of kind of selling clubs in football where you know they sell their best players for huge sums reinvest smaller sums and find you know the next talents and bring them up through and that's how they operate as a club um there's no reason to say that it can't be a model in Counter-Strike, um, particularly with the open ecosystem, I think matching a little bit more closely to football than, for example, a franchise system. I totally see the logic in, in being that kind of uh, team. However, I think in Fnatic's case, it speaks probably to a lack of ambition if they do sell Brolan. I think... Fnatic have seemed pretty unambitious in general with the rosters they have put together ever since their highly successful Swedish core fell apart. I don't think Fnatic have seemed like the most ambitious, willing to shell out the most money. Um, I mean, they did a lot of trying to kind of piece bits together around Flusher and JW and Crims at various different points. And uh, obviously... Most recently, bringing together Brolan Crims with the British core. That's fallen apart with Smooya going, but it just hasn't been the most well-run Counter-Strike division I've ever seen, to be perfectly frank. It hasn't seemed super ambitious. And this move, if it were to go ahead, I think would just confirm to me that Fnatic are basically only in Counter-Strike for the sake of having a team in Counter-Strike, for the sake of being visible in the space, and they don't really give a shit if they win anything. Next up, I think this says a huge amount about NIP and the ambition of that organization. Uh, you can talk about how well ninjas has been run as an organization since again the collapse of their swedish very successful core interesting parallels i think you can draw between the journeys of nip and fanatic in cs but i think nip have at least been more ambitious in general um they've always been the ones to get the young talent whether it's rez or plopsky or whoever's coming through they've been the ones generally to get there first the only one Fnatic got was Brolan, and, you know, look, they're basically getting ready to offload him. And obviously, Nip, hugely ambitious bringing in device. That was a mega bumper signing. That is a statement signing. I fully believe the organization saying they want to win um, majors and that they want to win tournaments by bringing device on. That's believable. And the money that will have been involved, depending on what figure you believe, regardless of not just the transfer figure, but also... Um, the salary that device is going to be commanding, that would have been a lot of cash. And the fact that they're willing to now follow it up with even more cash for a very, very highly touted young star. I think Broland's incredible and uh, one of the best Swedish players. Says a lot. Says a lot about ninjas. And, you know, whatever you think about Fnatic and ninjas in pyjamas, you know, all the other stuff that's maybe going on around both organizations, I know which one I think is a more ambitious entity in Counter-Strike. It also makes me wonder, right, hearing this news, obviously knowing that device has been absent for a little while, you know, you can go out there and do your research and figure out exactly what has gone on and why he has been absent for a while. But I, it makes me wonder if device is maybe having some conversations behind the scene with Ninja's management. Maybe he wants a stronger lineup and he will only consider returning if there is a stronger lineup in place. I don't know. 
maybe this is nip off their own back saying look we need to try and make device feel comfortable feel wanted feel like he can win stuff here and maybe this is ninjas going out off their own volition and getting hold of brolan i don't know but it's hard to think that there is no link whatsoever between device his absence his potential return and this signing i, I don't think there can be any illusions that there's not some link there i think there has to be some kind of link now with all of that said we've got to think about who brolan would be replacing on nip and the only realistic one is you have to assume plopsky now if i was looking for a swap i would say actually if you don't want to mess with the structure of the team too much then res is actually a much more sensible option to swap um because Plopsky is a role player. That's what he does on, on Nip. And bringing Brolan in, who's a star rifler, or someone like Plopsky, who's been being more of a role player and sacrificing himself for the team. Ah, ah, I don't know. I don't know. I wonder if that is going to work, particularly under Hampus's leadership. But then again, actually, it might suit Hampus's leadership more, having lots of star players and playing a looser style. I think maybe that could actually fit hampers better but does it fit device very well having a very loose style with lots of star players uh, like do you see what i mean the balance and the chemistry of this team it's not fully apparent exactly how it's all going to work out and play out the other thing i actually wanted to mention about plopsky is people talk about plopsky like he's shit like when he joined it he was banging he was playing really well he looked like a really good promising young player Obviously, you know, since then and in the recent times, he's, he's suffered. But like I say, I think that's because he's sacrificing himself as more of a role player. I think he's taken more of a back seat he, to allow Hampus and Rez and Device to, in theory, be the guys who go out there and do the fragging. Like, I don't know. Um, people talk about Plopsky like he's some kind of shitter. But I, yeah, like I don't understand that. I, I always thought like Plopsky looked pretty decent, especially when he first joined Nip. Um yeah, I, I don't think Plopsky's that bad. I think he sacrifices himself to be a role player in the team. So basically, um, my conclusions on this one. I think it shows a lack of ambition from Fnatic if they take this. I think it shows a lot of ambition for Nip. I think it would probably be a good move. Uh, if you're Fnatic and you say, look, we don't give a shit if we win, then it's a good move for everyone. Fnatic get a load of cash. NIP get a very, very good player. Brolan gets a team that's more ambitious and an organization that's probably willing to invest more to put stuff around him so that he can win. Like, I think Fnatic are losing out, honestly, even with the cash coming in, because I don't think they're going to reinvest it. But I don't think Fnatic give a shit, to be honest. I think they're going to insta-sell if they ever get an offer like this. I think it's, it's you know, they're going to sell. I don't think they care. I don't think they want to win stuff anymore. You know, I, I think they'll just sell, to be honest with you. Thank you for watching, guys. Remember the drill. Like, comment, favorite, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And if you didn't like it, pew, get out of here.